Pie and Stuff in Duncan, and this is my studio at the Charlotte Art League. This is the place where the magic happens, and I come here every day now, and I'll sit in here and start painting. So come on in and let me give you a quick little tour. This is the first wall. When I have my uh, newest paintings, I'll put them on here because people come into the gallery this way. And this is one of my black and white paintings with the red. I call it In the Twilight. So this is the first place uh, that I'm going to tell you. Okay. This painting is called All is One. And this represents my style of squirrel emblem because it's like covered up in it. And I was thinking one day of having one of those jelly bean contests with like how many beans are in a jar and how many strokes I have in the painting. There's a whole lot of this. So what I try to do to show and express with this painting is that I use the light here as the divine. And radiating from it are the squiggles, and it's like it's on everything that exists. Uh, into the tree, here into the trunk, the deer in the grass, and the sky. Then I have these swirly like, little comments, kind of reminds you of Starry Night in a way, that are coming down this way. Here, so this whole painting is covered with the squiggles here. And, uh, so I'll try to show that we're all connected, that it's all one thing, the grass, the tree, and the light itself. It all has this, um, that, uh, some of it's a vibrational state, you can think of, or even a stroke or a note of music. Like, to me, every painting could be a song, and every stroke is like a musical note. And you create this movement that you have, like, you have a, the climax here going, and the soft lullaby coming here, and then you got a little drama happening here, and then a little bit more peace and security as you go up there. This is a commission piece I've been given, and it's like every artist's dream, where the client goes, just do whatever inspires you. But they do love trees, and so I have my tree here, this is angel oak that I'm using for the painting. Uh, this tree is actually in Charleston. It's about 1,500 years old. And I'm using this as a model for my painting here. This is a painting is um, 8 foot by 5 foot. And it's going over my client's couch. It's going to be fun taking up four floors of stairs. I'll have to get a couple of people with that. Ugh. Anyway, so I, I started off with this whole canvas in black. And sometimes after I do that, I'll sit back and I'll see like a little crease or something in the paint or whatever. And then images and ideas start forming in my head. And I'll come out and do like a little outline of um, what I'm visualizing. One thing that really intrigued me here was this arch, this branch. I thought it was really beautiful, so I wanted to come in and do like a little waterfall here. And again, my paintings, I try to have a lot of similar symbolism in them, how you say it. Uh, the light represents the divine. And I'm going to fill it up with leaves and things here. And the tree, trees are like people with your roots or your feet in the ground, and your arms off your branches reaching out to embrace the light. And I've incorporated my long lines of squiggles, and what I call those are like super strings or God's essence. It's a uh, strings or God's essence that's woven into the fabric of nature, where every, everything exists. So I'm about 40% through with this painting. I'll be adding a lot of red leaves on it, and get some more rays of light coming down. And I'm going to try to make a light on this side and more of a darkness on this side to show our duality of nature that we have of good and evil and how I got a little bit of light of goodness is kind of keeping the darkness at bay, keeping it from coming in and consuming us here. I used the three streams here, this overflow, uh, as the number for like the Trinity. 
class now I'm school like number in this branch of love this whole branch here. In this little passageway here, it's kinda of like the journey that we take through life and uh, like life and death too. It's almost like a birthing canal. It's like if we get through this that we'll go to the other side where the eternal life will be in heaven. So I call this painting well, it's kind of like a heavenscape to me. Uh, I really want to enrich it with the light and color and where you can feel a sense of the universal spirit that's in everything. Yeah, and underneath it is unconditional love that you kind of see or this invisible spirit that's woven in everything that exists. silhouettes of the leaves and then I'm going to come back and put some color on top of it. I wanted to make these leaves a little darker to you know, show this crouching darkness that's coming in. You have the dark here and it's the sun on the other side. Right now, it's a little blob to paint. And right now, Bob Ross would be saying, Look at the happy little leaf, and the happy little tree. It's kind of an oak tree, so I'm, I'm kind of laying it down with a little bit of spots or points to it. You get kind of an idea. And it's always good to paint the sky first before you do the leaves. Or you'd have to go in between to put the sky. It also helps, gives you like a 3D effect too. You do the your sky first and then you put this over on top of Yeah, acrylic paint is a Cheap Joe's brand where I teach classes at. It's um, a little bit thicker, it doesn't flatten out like basic acrylics do. And this way I can have a little texture with my painting also. And I'm a barbarian when it comes to painting. I kind of revel in it. <laughs> but I use one brush through a whole painting and the jar is my palette. This is it here. And I love when uh, I'm invited to these art councils to uh, do demonstrations. You see all of the ladies that are there with their palettes and they have their barcodes written on their palette so each painting that they use and I'll come out here and just dip in here and have at it. And I can hear them go <laughs> but hey it works for me. This is where the passion happens. You just gotta let it go. It can't be reserved. You just gotta throw it on there. Kind of being like the Mad Hatter. But, um, these paintings, when I put the drama in here, they're almost like paintings of expression. But I want you to feel the emotion of it. It's like every painting is a story and every stroke is a word. This painting is telling a story. This could be about this tree and the conflict that's happening between light and darkness. How it kind of pulls on all of us, I guess, various times in our life. The dark could be depression. It could be bad events or things in life that feels like it's overwhelming. It's like it's coming down, ready to just spill all over and consume you. But then, if you have your faith, and positive thinking, the way of looking at the world, with the light on the other side, will be shining through like this ray of light here. It's going to push back the darkness or keep it at bay. So that you continue living, and I'm going to have red leaves put all through here, make it really bright and healthy.
wow, it is so hot in there. So after about two hours, I come out. At the end of the day, painting really hard. I get on my old bike and I get some air. After my accident, I haven't been able to run much, but on the bike, I'm running with the air going in there. This is my favorite time of day after a good day of painting. Get all leathered up, helmet on, and take off. Thank <laughs> you.